Hello everybody, welcome back to another Farming Simulator 22 map first impressions video. Today we're going to take a look at Millstown. But before that, this video is brought to you by Gizmo UK and Doughboy2913. Thank you for being Farm Barons. So the Millstown map can be found over at the FarmingSimulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for all platforms. Now, before we dive into the description, I want to tell you something. This is a darn nice map. Really, really impressed with this map. It's been a long time since I've said that. Let's move on. Welcome to Millstown, a fictional U.S. town with a prosperous future in farming, livestock, forestry, and production. With mostly medium to large fields, animals, and forestry, there's always something to keep you busy. Thanks to the good folks at Larson's Livestock, they provided the farmers of Millstown with five locations to buy bulk lime, dry fertilizer, slurry, and manure. Larson's is also ready to buy your slurry and manure as well. Millstown has a good amount of productions, with some offering multiple ways to deliver. There are some farm supply productions offering vehicle and train unloading. The South Farm Supply Production also is able to load to a train. The West Grain Mill offers unloading from train as well as a vehicle the four productions at the east of your honey's bee send their all right hold on the four productions at the east and your honey's bees send their produce pallets to a nearby warehouse for easy pickup in new farm mode you start out with an arable farm as well as vehicles and implements for field work you own your four fields the north cow farm with a meadow and the north farm supply production and the grain mill production to the east. A large beehive is also owned in New Farmer. Once the money starts rolling in, you should, and should you wish to expand your farming operations, a second larger farm to the southeast is available for purchase. Now, as far as the map goes, there are four pre-built farms. Two are arable, one farm with sheep and pigs, to the north, a cow pasture with up to 160 cows, 69 farmlands, 41 fields, Many easily mergeable, four meadows, 24 productions, including two farm supply factories, two flour mills, a grain dryer, diesel, con diesel production, concrete pavers, stone mill, wooden toys, empty pallets, water distribution, BGA and sawmill, 19 selling points, including, including two train selling points, a Chemco facility to buy your solid or liquid fertilizer, three greenhouses, five lime, dry fertilizer, manure, and slurry bulk buy points. Three liquid fertilizer and herbicide block buy points, two train systems with three silo locations. The train transfer silo at the east or southwest can also store and transfer between both grains or trains and vehicles. Three buildable lot areas, one with object storage, 21 custom collectibles. And these collectibles are dang hard to find because they blend in so well. Let's just say. If you find something that you could hold in your hand or use in your hand, and it looks like it's just deco, it may well very well be a collectible. So try it out. Two stone and sand quarries to sell directly for your use in production. Contracts with two grass bailing missions. This map is ready for precision farming. And there are a ton of map notes. Now, I'm not going to read these map notes because literally we're going to be here for another 10 minutes. And that's if I try to read about as fast as I can, which is probably about half the speed most of you all can read. Any rate, do read through these notes because they will help you out in the end. Now, lastly, this map does have one required mod in the red barn package. So hopefully the fact that it has a single required mod doesn't exclude this from your map list because this, this is a darn nice map. There, I've said it twice. I'm not going to say it again. Hopefully. Maybe. Now, in addition to those required mods, or that required mod, I should say, we are going to be using the mods we typically use when we look at maps. They are additional field info, additional game settings, animal food overview, field lease, field calculator, precision farming, and straw harvest. Now, when you load this map up in farm manager mode or start from scratch, 
The main starting arable farm is completely void of buildings. In addition, the only two vehicles you start out with is a tractor and a forklift. That's it. Now, the other farms are fully pre-built in all play modes. Also, if you happen to be loading this map up on a low-end system, possibly one with integrated graphics, do note that you will have no issues whatsoever with respect to having nice high frame rates. Now, remember what I said about collectibles and how anything and everything that may possibly look, you know, like, like it's deco could be a collectible. How about a push broom? There. There's 20 more that you get to find all by yourself. Actually, I feel a little pity on you. There. Now there's 19 that you have to find. That was a push broom and a water water pitcher. Yep. 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 These things are that hard. It's 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 crazy. Crazy. I even knew where they were, and it took me five minutes to find them. Let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA. Now, as you can see, this field or this map is basically composed of square or rectangular fields. They should be fairly higher helper friendly. And also, as the description said, many of these can be easily merged into a single larger field. We do have all the standard crops available to us in FS22 available on this map. And if we have the premium expansion enabled, we will have our red beets, carrots, and parsnips. Let's go ahead and take a look at our lands overview. We start off owning farmland ID 56. This is the main arable farm. In any alternate game mode, you can buy this for $124,000. $160. We also start up by owning a cow farm to the north or a cow pasture to the north. We can buy that in any alternate game mode for $248,155. We also own farmland ID 18, farmland ID 15. We have farmland ID 42 over here to the west. And we have farmland ID 37, which does include a large beehive. Now, as far as other farms on this map, we've already mentioned about the main farm and the cow farm at farmland ID 56 and 57. There is a pig farm at farmland ID 55 that can be bought for $103,654. There are greenhouses located at farmland ID 58. They can be bought for $94,284. There is a cow and chicken farm at farmland ID 54. It can be bought for $335,872. And that is pretty much it as far as the farmlands, at least that I was able to quickly discover. Farmland ID 69. That is one that you're probably going to want to buy because it's got some stone and sand that you're going to be able to collect and then further process at some of your productions. Let's go ahead and take a look. Over here at our farmland lease screen, the farmland lease screen is going to show us all of the Bible farmlands, how large those farmlands are, if those farmlands include any fields, what fields are included, then lastly, how much is that farmland going to cost us? Now, if we take a look at our field calculator screen, this is going to show us the specific sizes of each particular field. And with respect to the precision farming soil map, this map does have a custom soil map. So let's go ahead and see what it looks like. The fields to the north are going to be a mix of silty clay, sandy loam, and loamy sand. Fields to the south are going to somewhat substitute the loam for the silty clay, but still we're going to see a predominant mix of loamy sand and sandy loam as well. With respect to our crop counter, we are working with the standard base game crop counter. And with respect to our prices screen, we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game crops. In addition, we do have the ability to sell our eggs, oil, and milk, and our silage, hay, straw, and grass. In fact, we literally have the ability to sell just about everything. We can sell all of our base game production items. We're also going to have the ability to obviously buy bulk lime. That was a pretty prominent aspect in the description. We also have multiple areas to sell our stones. And then we have as far as custom productions. 
we have dry corn, dry wheat, dry barley, concrete pavers, pallets, wooden toys, red dye, sand, millstone, milled sand, oil shale, spent oil shale. And then we have our farm production pack. Yep, we can sell those. We have our premium expansion and platinum expansion productions. Yep, we can sell all of those as well. So pretty much if you have any DLC with respect to Farming Simulator 22, you're gonna be able to sell it here on this map without putting down any, any additional sell points. If you are playing with pumps and hoses, we have two, that's right, two places to sell your separated manure, and those playing with straw harvest will have four areas to sell your hay and straw pellets. With respect to your starting fleet in new farmer mode, we start out with a fairly large list of starting machinery. It ranges in repair levels from 98% down into the 80s, and everything has some level of hours of operation on it. Not that really big of a deal. Nothing is leased. We start out by owning 18 cows at the cow pasture to the north. We do have contracts available on this map, and we do own the North Farm Supply production at the start. And well, this farm supply production is gonna be able to make a heck of a lot of items. We have two recipes for total mixed rations. We have two ways of making pig food. We have the ability to convert grass into hay, as well as grass, hay, and chaff silage. We can take and make silage digestate, or should I say silage and digestate from chaff or grass. We have the ability to make wheat seed or barley seed. Mineral feed, we can make lime. Digestate from, or we can take digestate and make liquid fertilizer. Or we can take digestate and make solid fertilizer. We also have a grain mill where we're gonna be able to make wheat, barley, oat, and sorghum flour with either pallets or not. Now, when I was first looking at this, I'm like, okay, five units of wheat to make five units of flour. Five units of wheat and a half a pallet is gonna make five units of flour. Well, why on earth would I wanna do that when I get the same output with wheat flour? But then I noticed, well, these numbers up here are changing. So productions that give you an option to use pallets are going to produce more of that product per month with the pallets at a lower cost. So wheat flour, 3,600 cycles per month, $24 per cycle. Wheat flour with pallets, 4,320 cycles per month at $19 per cycle. So we're gonna get more flour for less if we include pallets in the production recipe. And that's gonna continue throughout the entirety of the map. And then lastly, as I said, there are 21 collectibles. I've already shown you where two of them are. So therefore, you're gonna have fun finding the other 19. Now, with respect to our starting vehicles, we start out with the Steyr 8150 small tractor. We have the Massey Ferguson 7726S medium tractor and the New Holland Genesis T8360 large tractor. We have the Axle Flow 7150 Harvester, and that is going to be paired up with the 41 foot TerraFlex grain header and the Nardi N6045 header trailer. We've got the Manitou MC184 forklift, and just for the record, the forklift and the Steyr tractor, those are the two things that are going to remain in all game modes. All the rest of the stuff is not owned if you load this up in any game mode other than New Farmer. We have the Big Body 750S trailer. We have the Vector 800 cultivator. We've got the HR6040 RCS and BTFR6030 Cedar Power Hero combination and the TF1512 Cedar Hopper. We have the Breedall K105 Fertilizer and Lime Spreader, as well as the PFW18000 Maxi Lime Plus 3 Tanker. We have the GMD8733 FF Butterfly Mower and the GMD3123F Front Mower. We have the Rapid 580V Forage Wagon and the 
Case LB436 HD Square Baylor. We have a Hauer XB190 front loader arms. For the front loader arms, we have the universal bucket, pallet fork, and a bell spike. Then we also have a 1,000 kilogram front weight and the TL1239 Meridian belt. With respect to mods and DLCs, well, this map does have a couple modified trailers, the MKS-8 and the MKS-32. They have been modified to also transport methane as well as fuel. Then we have herbicide, liquid fertilizer, water, and milk. We just take a quick stroll down the lane here. We're going to come over here to our arable farm. This is our starting farm. A nice red barn here as far as our implement storage. Nice three bay garage with our new Holland tractor. We have our farmhouse with our sleep trigger. Easy shed with some more implements. We've got a large silo system with our dump and fill pipes. This is going to be bale and pallet storage for a total of 360 bales or pallets. We've got another silo system here. So we have our dump and fill point. And then this is going to be a little bit of a windmill. And from the description in the shop, this appears to give us a little bit of money per hour. So if we come here into build mode, we have small wind turbine. Let's go ahead and check and see what we're going to get here. Production generators. We have our small wind turbine, $2,880 per month. While we're already in build mode, let's go ahead and check. We do have the red shed as a required mod. So we can see the red barn pack listed right there. Red Barn Pack also has custom silos. We have a manure heap extension, liquid chemical storage tank. Red Barn Pack even includes a farmhouse. As far as custom productions, we have, well, we have 24 productions available on this map. And in build mode, we can place a grain dryer. We can place a pallet factory, a cereal factory with pallets a grain mill with pallet recipe, a oil mill with pallet recipe, a spinnery with pallet recipe, sugar mill with pallet recipe, dry grains mill with pallet recipe as well. And we're going to do an overview of all of the productions here in a little bit. We have some custom greenhouses also available on this map. We have a couple custom animal pins that are either part of the red barn pack or included with the map itself. And then with respect to our ground textures, we got a fair bit of ground textures available to us and some custom plants. Let's go ahead and put those down. We have a para. Yeah, that one. Mobile grass, short grass, long dry grass. Papa, yeah, okay, that. Room X. And then we get into the standard ground textures or plants right there. Here we have our belt. We can rent a train right here at our arable farm. And then we've got another easy shed right here. Now let's jump up to our cow pasture. And again, this is also owned at the start. So we have another farm silo here with our dump and fill pipe. We have two drive-through silage bunkers. We have a manure heap for our cows. And as I mentioned, we have 18 cows to start. We can hold a total of 160 in this building. We have our milk trigger. We have our food and straw trigger inside of here. And of course, we're going to have our slurry trigger here along the side. 
Now I've gone ahead and purchased the other farms as well as the greenhouse and taken over all of the productions on the map. So right now we're over here at the pig farm, which is just west of field six. Let me go ahead and show you where we were. So we started here. We went up here to the cow pasture and now we're over here. Greenhouses are located right there. So after we take a look here at our sheep and pig area, we're going to run over here to this large farm and then we'll be taking a look at all of the various productions. So we have our food trough here for these sheep. We have our wool spawn point. And we have our animal delivery. 60 sheep are going to be available in here. We have 150 pigs available in this red barn. And then we're gonna have a food trough right there. With then our slurry point. And then we have another sheep area with a food trough. And 75 sheep in here. Our wool is going to be on the side of the barn. We have another pallet and bale storage here for 300 bales or pallets. Some other machinery storage. And as you may have already seen, we have a silo located right here. Dump and fill pipe. And you can see we're going to be able to actually store, it's a hayloft. So we have hay, grass, straw, silage, chaff, pig food and mixed rations. So actually let's jump back over here. Cause this up at our cow farm, I didn't see these icons initially when I was looking at the map. Well, this is also a hayloft, not a farm silo. And that makes me think, well, yep, indeed. A hayloft here at the main starting farm as well. All right, let's jump over here to The large arable farm to the south. So we have a sleep trigger. Our wardrobe trigger actually looks like our shop trigger, which I thought was worth checking out. And we're going to come down here. We have another three bay garage with workshop trigger. We have two pull through silage bunkers. I said arable farm, but this actually has some animals. We have food, water, I have those backwards, 45 cows, and then milk here in this little hut. Here we have food for our chickens. We have our egg point for our chickens. And then we have our Five point for our chickens. 500 chickens available in this chicken coop. Nice barn. Lots of machinery storage. More machinery storage through here. We have another hayloft. Nice easy shed for some more machinery storage. Another bale and pallet storage for 360 bales and pallets. All of this great storage. So this is a hay dryer or a grain dryer. And we're gonna take a look at this during our productions overview. We have our interactive icon there. We have our output pipe here. And you may notice something up here at the top. Uh-huh. We're going to have to get an auger to put this into the dryer. And then here we have a farm production down here. So we have our output pipe. We have our dump station. We have a rent train trigger. And this particular farm production 
will also be able to receive and load from a train. This is going to be our farm silo. So we have a dump and fill pipe. And then we have another nice, large, big red barn for more implement and vehicle storage. And that is pretty much our farm tours of this map. Now let's go and take a look at our productions. We already talked about the North Farm Supply production that we own at the start, as well as our grain mill. We have three greenhouses, two that are going to produce tomatoes, lettuce, and strawberries, and one that is going to produce tree saplings. They're going to require water and seed as inputs. We have our grain dryer, which we just talked about. It's going to accept corn, wheat, and barley and make dry corn, dry wheat, and dry barley. No other input is required. We have a concrete pavers factory that is require, going to require stone, stone, stone. Yes, that's how we say the word, stone. Stones, sand, lime, water. And then we have the ability of making milled concrete pavers with milled stone and milled sand as well. We have a pallet factory that's going to set logs and make pallets and wood chips. We have stone and sand mill. We're going to be able to take stone and water and make milled stone. And then our milled sand production. We have a refinery, which is going to take stone, water, oil, shale, and methane and produce. Sorry. Stone and water is going to make oil shale. Then we can take and make diesel out of oil shale and methane. There you go. And then we're going to have spent oil shale as an output of that. We have a toy workshop, which is going to be able to create red dye number eight. No, no, it's not really that. Out of tomatoes, lime, and water. And then we're going to be able to paint our wooden toys red and then sell those as well. We have our South Farm Production Facility, which is going to be able to do the same as the North Farm Production Facility. We have a water distribution factory, water input, water output. But what it does allow us to do is go ahead and flag that as distributing. So we have just one place to put our water and then everything else that is going to require water can get drawn from it. We have our bakery for bread and cakes. We have a carpentry facility for our furniture. And then we have our cereal factory. And again, we have cereal factory without pallets and cereal with pallets. Again, 2160 cycles at $120 for cereal. But if we go with pallets, we get 2592 cycles per month at $96 a cycle. So more for less. We have a dairy, pretty standard dairy. We have a sugar mill that will also do pallet production. We have a Oil mill, but which will also accept pallets as an alternate. Our spinnery, which will also accept pallets as an alternate. And our dry grain mill, which is going to be dry wheat, dry barley, and dry corn to make flour. And they also have a pallet recipe. We can make planks from our sawmill. We have a tailor to make clothing. And our biogas plant is fairly standard. Well, let me jump all the way back up to the starting farm. And from there, let's get on with taking a look at the map. So let's circle back here with respect to our scoring. Can the farms be customizable? Yes, entirely. I'm able to sell everything at all the farms without any issue whatsoever. So the only caveat is going to be like these rent train triggers. Can't sell those. Not that big of a surprise. But everything else at the farms can be sold. This farm, cow farm, pig and sheep farm, the other arable farm, everything. Full point goes to that. Full point also goes to the fact that we do have production built in or areas set aside for such because, well, we have both. We have both lots of productions built into this map and we have production areas where we can build. The ability to sell everything, yep, 
We do. So we're going to go ahead and give the map a full point. Not just because we can sell base game stuff, but we can sell all of the DLC items as well. Now over here beside field one, we do have our biogas plant. We have two three-sided silage bunkers, and we have the large BGA. Now, one thing that I have not tried prior to this is can we sell big time props if we can? Wow. We can sell almost everything here at the biogas plant. So if you want to completely clear this out and do something else with this area, you're freely able to do so. Really like seeing that. Up here in the woods, this is where we're going to find our little toy factory. So we have our dump station, we have our pallet spawn point, and we have our interactive icon around the side of the door. Just sneaking through the woods. We also have another kind of a mine area where we're going to be able to bring up sand and stone. We will need, of course, to buy this area before we can collect those products. Just outside the forest, we have a farmer's market cell point just down the road from that. We now have a bales and more cell point. I'll give you a hint. There's a collectible hidden nearly in plain sight. Then over here we have another cell point in the trading depot. I like how all of these have names on them. So we're done point there. Across the road we have our tailor. So we have our Interactive icon, or dump point, our wardrobe trigger, and our pallet spawn point. We have our cow pasture, which we've already talked about. Nice little overlook. Again, did I say this is a really nice map? I think I've already said that maybe once or twice. Yeah, it's a really nice map. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. So over here, this gets a little complicated. And if the map has any sort of a fault, it's it's this. Because this, this is a little complicated. Let me explain. So we got a whole lot going on here. We have a north train silo. Right, so we can dump and fill from the train and we can dump here to dump into the train but we don't see any sort of trigger to pull things out okay then we also have a h and h milling grain sales well that's located right there and then we have the liquid chemical buying station that is going to be right here and then we have auto save kicking in and we have then the north farm production right here and this is something that we own at the start so we have our interactive icon our dump point and our fill point for that we also have this and i believe this is to input product into our north farm production from a train Now our train line runs this way and it basically runs off the edge of the map. We have a rent train trigger over there and then we have the edge of the map cell point. Got our nice forested area up here. Let's loop back around because I want to show you what's on the other side of this field. Field 5. Remember in the description where it mentioned there were five places where you could buy 
slurry, manure, lime, and solid fertilizer. Well, that's one of them right here. So we can buy manure, slurry, lime, and solid fertilizer. When we see these together, that's what we're going to be able to do. Right on the other side of that, we have our spinnery. Interactive icon, dump point, and out spawn point. We have our main starting farm located right here. So with that, let's first be over here to the left. We see our trio of triggers. So we know what's going on with those. But let's swing, swing over here to the west. We have our BGA. Remember, we sold that. And we have another nice trio of triggers. So that's three of those. Supposedly, there's five. Here we have our sheep and pig farm. We've already taken a look at that. Here we have the three greenhouses. We've bought these, but they are available at Farmland ID 58. We make our way over here, We're starting to come into the town. We have a restaurant, cell point. Get back down here to where we are. We have textiles and embroidery cell point. Chemco and our vehicle shop. So here we have the Chemco buy point. You can see what products they will buy right there. And then our vehicle shop. Good old clever remoters. Very large area for our vehicles to spawn, and also a very large area for our machinery to get out of the shop. Shouldn't have too much issues at all in transporting any sized machinery. We have our maintenance dealer right here, so we can buy, sell, trade, repaint, and repair. Here we have a farmer's market sell point for our pallets and fresh goods. And then we're going to loop this around into town because Lord almighty, we have ourselves a whole lot going on. We have a dry grain mill. So this is going to be for dry wheat, dry barley and dry corn. We have our dump point, our pallet spawn point, and our interactive icon. We can also provide our dry flour mill with product from the train. Over here, we have our sawmill. So we have our wood chips. We have our cell point for our logs, our cell wood trigger, our interactive icon, and our plank spawn point. Our carpentry, right? Dump point, pallet point, and interactive point. Concrete pavers, so we have our dump point, interactive point, and pallet spawn point. And we have then, this is going to be a farm or train silo so we have sorry the stone and sand mill our train silo is right there so it's real close that's why i got those mixed up stone and sand milling so we have our dump and fill from the train and i absolutely love signage right so stone and sand production to the right stone and sand sales to the left no confusion there. We have our 
output pipe for our production. We have an interactive icon. We have our water input and we have another rent train trigger there. This is going to be a dump and fill pipe for the train silo. So we're going to be able to transfer product from the two different train lines from here, as well as then to also transfer that onto or from a trailer dump and fill pipe there. So we've got our fill pipe here for our pallet factory. So that's going to be for wood chips. We have our interactive icon. We have our wood cell trigger, and then we have our pallet spawn point. This is going to be the south farm production supply, just like the north. So we have our dump point, our trailer loading point there, our interactive icon. We're going to be able to load and unload from the train we have a rent train trigger and then this is going to be to storage silo or a buy silo for liquid fertilizer and herbicide uh look manure slurry lime solid fertilizer so this is our train silo we've already talked about that we have another restaurant cell point we have our bowling alley which is going to be a cell point we have our dairy production located right there. Here we have water distribution. We input our water, we output our water, and we manage our water right there. We have our bakery right here. And that's right beside our grocery mart for our grocery cell point located right there. And then this is going to basically be a buildable site. And then a water tower, water trigger. Wasn't that, that's a ton of stuff going on here in town. Now, with respect to buildings where appropriately are using the new texturing technique. Yep. They are full point there as well. Oh, did I miss? Did I miss our fuel point? I did, I believe. So we're going to be able to sell diesel. And we're going to be able to fill our tractors and vehicles with diesel here as well. Let's move across the map now. And we have another area where we can get stone and lime. This is farmland ID 69. We have the arable farm, which we've already looked at down here, or the southern farm, which, well, it's not really arable because it does have cows and chickens. We have our large beehive down here, and this is owned at the start. And now we're gonna need to make our way over here to some of the final triggers we need to talk about but before we get over there we need to get over here because this is going to be our animal dealer now in the map notes section if you didn't bother to read it i've got a pretty good sense that probably most of you did it even though i encouraged you to do so well i'm here to cover your back just a wee little bit There are six things, six animal pastures pre-placed on this map at the various farmyards. Base game allows you to place 10 total. Six are used at the various farms. Three are used here at the dealership. One, two, and three. It's a little trick map authors do in order to get their animated animals if you haven't figured that out so there are three animal pastures being consumed here at the dealership these cannot be owned they just exist but they do go against our quota of 10 
So you can place one animal pasture down before you're at your limit of 10. Unless, of course, you sell some of the ones already placed around the map. Now, if you are on PC, there is a fix for that. There's an app for that. No, it's, it's a script mod. There's a script mod that will bump that limit from, I think, 10 to 42. So you can just add the more animal pastures mod and you're good to go. If you're on console though, sorry, no script for you. You're gonna have to delete existing animal pastures if you wanna put more down. So we have our animal buy point and we have our bail sell point here at their animal dealer. We're coming over here to a trio of triggers. That's gonna be our friend. Buy manure, slurry, lime, and fertilizer. And then over here we have several productions. Okay, so we have our sugar mill. We have our flour mill. We have our oil mill. We have our cereal factory. All these are base game factories. All the triggers are where you expect but where are the pallets? Well, the pallets are inside of this big building. So our oil mill pallets go here. Our honey pallets go there. Our sugar pallets, our flour pallets, and then our cereal pallets. And if that's not enough storage, well, we also have a bale and pallet storage building right next door here and hold a total of 250. And then next to that, well, we have another buildable site that we can buy. And while I only really found two buildable sites in my exploration during this video, the description said there were more and we can buy this land. And if we want to, we can clear this sign out by cutting down this tree. So anywhere that we have a lot for sale sign, if we cut the corresponding tree down, then the sign will vanish with the tree. So the last scoring metric is gonna be trigger in interactive areas being clearly marked. Yes, I think they are, in my opinion. Now there's some areas that are a little confusing, but they're not, they're not completely obfuscated in my opinion they're be able to be figured out without too much hassle so that's gonna map wrap not map this wrap up <laughs> oh, i'm getting excited that's gonna wrap this map up with a score of five out of five i really like this map i think i've said that two three four maybe five times maybe you haven't got the hint yet what do you think about this map if I had the time, I would play on it. Reality is, I don't have the time, sadly, but hopefully you do. Let me know down in the comments below, are you gonna give Milltown a try? Until next time, happy farming.